All right, let's go ahead and get started today. You are in Grading Hypothesis Enabled Readings. I'm Erin, I'm a Hypothesis Customer Success Specialist. And as such, my job is to make sure that you all know how to use Hypothesis and can implement it in your courses. Uh, joining us today is Becky, who is a Hypothesis Customer Success Specialist as well. Um, and so she's going to be helping answer any questions you might have in the chat. All right, so today here's what we're gonna talk about. Um, we are going to do a quick review of hypothesis in your LMS, like Canvas or Moodle or Blackboard. We're going to talk very quickly, um, again, just a quick review of what hypothesis and social annotation is. Then we're going to dive into this grading piece. And as we're going through, I want you to think about a couple questions. Um, one, I want you to really think about why would we grade annotations? Now, there's no right or wrong answer there. It's more I just want you to think about the why of things. Then I want you to think about how could I be grading annotations in my class such that that grade represents something of significance or value to my students. Um, and if you have great ideas, please, please throw them in the chat. If something has worked for you in your class, then go ahead and put that in the chat as well because we'd all love to hear it. So let's dive in with a re quick review of social annotation um, and hypothesis. So the idea is that social annotation allows you and students to really take the margins of a text and to collaborate in those margins around the text and to have these very nice and um, clear conversations, substantive conversations around the text itself. We have um, instructors from schools across the country with various LMSs today, whether that's Blackboard, Canvas, Moodle, Sakai, um, D2L, uh, Blackboard is not on there if anyone uses Blackboard or even Schoology. Just a quick review of using Hypothesis through your LMS. You all know that you can just configure Hypothesis to appear on the readings you want your students to do. Oops, let me go back. Um, and that they are automatically logged into Hypothesis when they access Hypothesis through the LMS and they are automatically part of the course. I am not going to teach you how to use Hypothesis in your LMS today because the hope is that most of you have at least tried it. If you want, need a quick review, do not stress. Remember how I said that we have all these resources in the slide deck? Here they are. These are all live links to walk you through how to use it in your LMS if you need a review. So you would just click the appropriate LMS and it will take you to a variety of articles on how to add a Hypothesis enabled reading, how to grade that reading, um, and even students' guides to using Hypothesis in the LMS. And I always like to throw this in as a reminder, any um, PDF you add using Hypothesis to your LMS must have optical character recognition, uh, meaning that the text is selectable. If you need more information or assistance with optical character recognition, then we have a live link here on the slide deck and then the other piece is the small groups. We get lots and lots of questions about small groups in the LMS. Uh, and so we have an entire article and resource to help you with that. We also have a partner workshop coming up in the near future on using Hypothesis with small groups. So feel free to click this link and also come over to our partner workshop. I believe it's next week or the week after, I can't remember, on how to use Hypothesis um, that way. All right. So now's the point where you all get to participate. Tell me how you have used Hypothesis thus far. Have you used it, for example, to be able to see how students read the text or what they understood about the text? Did you have students look for specific pieces of evidence? Have you asked students to ask questions of the text or to the text? Have you asked students to demonstrate their thinking or demonstrate their process in the annotations? So I want you to take a minute, go ahead and go over to the chat and tell me how you have used social annotation thus far in your courses. This is great. And I hope that you're picking up some ideas from your colleagues. Um, so Kelly, I like that you are asking students to highlight areas of confusion. My assumption there is because you're using um, hypothesis, you're asking them to explain their areas of confusion to their classmates through the hypothesis annotation bar. Um, Colleen made a good point about giving more guidance to students. I would agree with that always. Uh, converting a journal reflection assignment um, into a whole class annotation assignment. Commenting on a group article. Now, Timothy from Grayson uh, 
Texas. Thank you for noting that you're not on a coast. Um, you said that just to me, but I'll read what you said. He said that um, he, had, he asked students to locate parts of an argument that identify the essay structure. And Don, I like what you said, which is demonstrating understanding for continuing discussion. And Becky, thanks for offering this. Um, she is using it to help students read more critically and offer guiding questions and a diagnostic to help understand students' level of comprehension, which is fabulous, and then addressing it in the next class session. All right, so next, I'm gonna give you lots of questions today, which hopefully help you arrive at answers that work for you, okay? So I want you to think about what you are currently looking for in student annotations. Are you looking for that they make a certain number of annotations, as Colleen noted, right? Are you looking for a certain word count? Are you looking that they cite other sources in their annotations, therefore creating connections to other texts? Um, what about multimedia use? Are you asking them to create, come up with visuals that demonstrate their understanding or comprehension of the text? Are you asking them to use tags to categorize their annotations? What about certain reading strategies or certain disciplinary approaches to analysis? So I want you to just to kind of think about and process in your own head, what are you looking for when you ask students to annotate? And it could be several answers from this list or it could be none of these answers, it could be something we haven't noted, right? And as the reason I ask you to think about that is because I want you to take that into the grading piece and then think about how and why you would grade annotations. So we introed this with like different ways that some of you are using social annotation and different ways, different things you want to look for or pieces you want to look for in their annotations. So I want to make sure you have access to this slide too, which is what are some other ideas for using social annotation and thinking about how those ideas are being used and what students are getting out of it and how it meets the learning objective for the course. So there's a few ideas on this slide here. You are free to grab them. They are all live links. Uh, from the slide deck and take a look. So now let's dive into the grading. Why would we grade annotations? When we think about why we would grade annotations, we, ha we have to ask ourselves some questions. Why did you assign the reading? So some possible answers I have heard are because I have always assigned it. <laughs> I'm sure none of your colleagues would ever answer that, right? <laughs> That's what I use in my course every term. Therefore, I will assign it again. <laughs> Um, other reasons might be because I want to, students to compare it to other texts that we have read in the course, because it demonstrates a new viewpoint that we haven't considered. So always think about why am I assigning the reading? Then the next question to ask yourself is, why am I using hypothesis or social annotation with this specific reading? I had a, a, an instructor I worked with a couple of weeks ago and she said, well, it just seemed like a good idea. And I was like, great, I, I hear you. I, I think it's a good idea. I, I'm, I'm not in disagreement, but that is not a good enough answer, right? So think about why did I assign, why did I add the hypothesis layer to the text? Why am I asking students to annotate? Going back to the two slides ago. And then the third question I think is important goes into this backwards planning piece and the learning objectives is how does the reading and the social annotation fit into the learning objectives of my course? And I think that is the most important question. And if we're struggling to answer it, we gotta go even further back and think about why are we assigning the reading to begin with? You may think these questions are unrelated to grading. They're actually very related to grading. So here are some ideas about why you might assign the reading and why you might use social annotation with the reading. Um, providing feedback, gaining sense on points of confusion, which um, Ayla pointed out. Uh, preparing for discussion. I can't remember who else pointed that one out as well. Um, replacing in-class discussion, interacting with students using a low-stakes approach. I actually did a session with Western Kentucky this morning where the instructor said it is an incredible low-stakes approach to discussing the text and I got more participation out of students than I did by asking them pointed questions in class. Identifying formal textual elements. Somebody I think talked about that one earlier sharing personal opinions, making connections to other texts. These are just a few ideas. Of course, you might have your own as well. So now that we've thought about why we have assigned the reading, why we've assigned hypothesis, we can talk about how we would grade hypothesis. So there's a few options here um, on grading hypothesis annotations. 
I want to tell you that each of these items, if you see my cursor, it's a live link to something else. Okay. So you'll see this rubric over here on the upper right side. It's a live link to the full rubric. You see the scoring guide. It's a live link to an entire kind of lesson using hypothesis with the scoring guide included. And then um, the completion grade here, there is a live link to an entire hypothesis assignment. Um, I believe it was over Jane Eyre um, using social annotation. So I, I get a lot of questions after this session about where can I find these resources? Guess what? These are all links. So feel free to access those. So different ways to grade your annotations going back to why you assigned the annotations. Use a rubric. If you want students to meet specific points within their annotations, a rubric might be your best bet. And there is an example of a rubric when you click on this link. A scoring guide. If you just want to give students a very quick way to say, yep, this was thoughtful and this wasn't, nice way to do it. And a completion grade. Um, did you do it or did you not? And I think someone else talked about that um, at the beginning of the chat about so far I've done completion grades. I'd like to think further about how I could grade annotations. Once you've determined what kind of grading process you want to use, you can use grading directly within your LMS. Um, Becky, these slides are public. So Becky asked me if she can share these slides with her colleagues. Absolutely, share them all. <laughs> um, just credit Erin for her amazing slides. No, I'm just kidding, you don't have to do that. Uh, just give credit to Hypothesis, I guess. So I'm gonna talk about grading within each LMS. Uh, I'm gonna start with Canvas and then I'll go over to the LMSs. For Canvas, if you want to grade your Hypothesis enabled reading, it must be created as an assignment. It cannot be added directly to module content. Um, it must be an assignment. So you have to create the hypothesis enabled reading as an assignment first, and then you can add it to the module. When you do that, you can select, of course, the type of score you want to use, um, and then it will automatically be created in SpeedGrader. So you would open up SpeedGrader, and you'd be able to select the individual student at the top, and then you would see just their annotations and their replies, and you could add a comment and a grade. And it will feed your gradebook automatically. One thing that is unique with Canvas that we have figured out here at Hypothesis for our Canvas users out there is that you can use a Canvas rubric with, a speed, with SpeedGrader on a Hypothesis enabled reading. It involves a few steps to like trick Canvas. So um, those of you who are Canvas users, you're probably familiar with the Canvas rubric or the ability to create a rubric in Canvas. You would create your rubric and then you create the assignment, but this is the key difference. The submission type for the assignment becomes uh, on paper or online first instead of external tool. Then you save the rubric, save the assignment, go back and edit the assignment to external tool for submission type and then set up the hypothesis reading. Then when you launch SpeedGrader, you'll see the rubric on the far right side, the annotations for the specific student in the center and the reading on the left. This is why you get the slide deck so you can follow these directions because we don't have a help article on this. <laughs> this is how you trick Canvas until Canvas figures it out and we can't trick them anymore and we figure out a new way to do it. For those of you who are not Canvas users, you use Blackboard or Moodle, or D2L or Schoology or whatever, when you create your hypothesis enabled reading, you must enable evaluation. This is definitely true for Blackboard. In D2L, I think you have to go back and edit the assignment to enable evaluation. And in Moodle, I think when you create it, you enable um, evaluation as well. But you must enable evaluation. When you do that, a grading bar for the hypothesis enabled readings will appear at the top of your hypothesis assignment as an instructor. Students, of course, will not see that grading bar. When you see the grading bar, you can choose the specific student you would like to grade. Just their annotations and replies will show up and you can give them a grade at the top out of 10. Now I'm going to talk about the out of 10 piece in one second. Um, unfortunately, with other LMSs outside of Canvas that are not Canvas, um, I don't know a way to attach an LMS enabled rubric. 
if someone figures that out, let me know. Um, but for now, I do not know. Also with the other LMSs, you cannot offer comments unless you go back to the gradebook and write the comment in the gradebook. So let's talk about the out of 10 for the other LMSs. Um, it, when you look at the grading bar on say Moodle, Sakai, whatever, it's always gonna say out of 10 and you're gonna be like, but wait, I wanted it to be 20 points. I put 20 points in there. That's because the grading bar is showing you a proportional grade. So a grade of eight out of 10 means 80%. Um, and therefore you would give, you know, you would put eight out of 10 and the student would get 16 out of 20 points. This kind of, I want to say graph, I guess, um, here shows an example of what I'm talking about. I know that that is confusing and it is something we are looking at being better at. Uh, one thing to note is that as an external tool, we work within the limitations of the LMS that we're embedded in or integrated with. Um, and so that's one of those limitations. Um, so feel free to come back to this slide if you're confused on the grading piece. As a former educator and a former college professor, I tended to put everything as a whole grade to start with anyway, 10 points, because it's just easier to grade in general. But I understand when you don't want to do that. That was a down and dirty grading um, piece. I'm going to, I am watching the chat for questions and I also am going to give you back a lot of your time this afternoon. Um, but I want to just quickly review our pilot and subscription program. You are here because you're a member of our pilot and subscription program. We have 288 partners as of March 31st. Uh, so you're one of 288. And if your eyesight is fantastic, maybe you can pick out your school's logo on this screen. Uh, my eyesight is not fantastic, so I cannot. <laughs> Lots of you already know this, um, but we have an extensive knowledge base of help articles. Additionally, I would say that our support team is one of the best in the industry. Uh, they will get back to you very quickly. They will Zoom call with you and we will even work with students. So if you and our students submit a ticket to support at hypothesis.is, um, we will get back to you as soon as we can. And oftentimes there are same day appointments to Zoom with that team to do a quick screen share. If you send me a technical question, I will do my best to answer it, but I may just send it in as a support ticket. <laughs> uh, when you send a support ticket, make sure to use your school address so that we can put your ticket to the top of the line. If you don't use your school address, if you use your Gmail or AOL, we have no idea who you are and we don't prioritize you, no offense. This link here, the instructional design consultations, that's a quick link to meet with Becky or I. We do everything from helping you figure out how to add a hypothesis reading to your LMS, to talking about grading and going even more extensively into why we would grade or go through ideas for you with your course. In fact, we love it, that's our job. Um, Liquid Margins is our regular show on using social annotation across disciplines. And then partner workshops, you're at one of them, so thanks for coming. We have ones coming up on small groups, um, implementation and then creative ways of using social annotation as well, and multimedia. And then this is our email address to reach our team should you need anything at all. Um, as part of being a pilot or subscription partner, we are very hands-on and we help you with anything that you might need um, in a very personal way. That sounded bad, you know what I mean. Um, so I wanna stick around for questions. You can unmute if you have a question or a comment uh, or you can type in the chat. If you wanna take your 30 minutes back and at least get some lunch today, that is fair too. I have a quick question. This is Becky from Citrus College. Um, so Becky. we, um, I have a reading that students have completed. So this is what I'm seeing happen. And I don't know if it's a setting that I've messed up or if it's just a thing that happens. But so once the assignments, students have started replying and then we move on to the next week, the next module, but it, it seems like if a student goes in and looks at that, it triggers it like it's a new submission. It keeps popping up that I need to go in and grade it. Is that just something that that's just the way it works and I just need to ignore it? Yeah, let me give you some background on that one, Becky. Um, okay. So you're in Canvas and right. can, 
Canvas is pedagogically built on this idea that you turn something in, right. right? And hypothesis, when you think about the idea of social annotation being a recursive practice, right? you're not really turning it in, right? right. Um, but there's like, we don't know how to talk to Canvas and Canvas doesn't know how to talk to us such that they're not seeing every time a student opens it or writes a, something as a submission. Okay. So at this point, I would ignore it. Um, a lot of times it's based on the notifications that you have set for your Canvas course. Right. Um, and unfortunately, you cannot set notifications by assignment. Right. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure I hadn't messed up on the settings somehow. <laughs> Because the grades are carrying over, everything's working fine other than that. So um, just so I know that that's normal, then I'm, I'm good. Thanks for the help. More questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yep. Uh, I never used hypothesis, but I attended several workshops about it. And I'm thinking about it to use it in the future. And uh, But one thing I'm curious, because I want to start with like, posting some like uh, PowerPoint slide and receiving some feedback from student or like some comment. So as a like extra credit or something like that, is it is it possible without grade or some mm -hmm. extra credit? Yeah, you, now what is your um, LMS? Oh, Canvas. Yeah, so if you're going to do that, then you can choose not to grade it or you can uh, add it directly to okay. a module. Okay. Just as an external tool. Okay. So that, okay, that's the, uh, so it's uh, in on the setting, right? Um, it's on how you add the uh, reading, but if you would like to meet with Becky or I, we uh, would be okay. happy to walk you through it. Okay. What date and time is this meeting? Oh. Okay. My Siri is going crazy. Sorry. What is that? <laughs> Time <laughs> my, is coming. <laughs> my Apple wants to talk back to me. Um, yeah. So, is the time is already over. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's <fine. laughs> I know. Um, so if you want to schedule time with either of us, we'd be happy to work with you. Um, okay. Or so you send the you guys email to make appointment. Yeah. So if you go back on the slide deck. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I already saved the slide. Oh my yeah, God. so this yeah. link right here, the instructional uh, design one, consultation, okay. yeah. that'll schedule time with either of us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably I don't know the more details, so probably I need to do that. Did yeah, they, no, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then another thing, if there is nobody have a question, maybe. Another thing is, uh, I have a, like group activity, something like that, but is it is it good for that too, do you think? Like so right now something? Canvas groups. Yeah. Um Canvas does not allow you to assign external tools to small groups in Canvas. Oh. Um, but we have a workaround for that. If yeah. you, I believe it was on like slide three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't, let me go back and see if I can find it. It was at the beginning um, with a link on how to, oh, there we go. How to use hypothesis with small groups. Mm. Oh, that's a link there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. There, I need to review that to just get an idea what to do. Yeah. And okay. again, Becky and I are happy to walk you through that as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe I need to go through it and then have a question, maybe ask you guys. And yeah, uh, another, because I, I don't use it, but my son is using it in different school. <laughs> so oh, nice. that's, why I, that's why I know some of the, it's not a problem, but I, I heard that like it, like fear feedback and so on. And there are so many feedback going on and on, on there. So sometimes it's very confusing. I don't know, is, is there any like solution for that or? You mean in terms of the number of annotations? Yeah, like yeah. because it's, it's so many things going on there and then sometimes it's hard to figure out. So there's a couple things you can do in the search bar at the top of the annotations. You can search for keywords or specific people who've made annotations. Yeah. Um, that's one way to filter out. The okay. other way to think about it too is that you can give students different jobs within the annotations. Mm. or assignments within the annotation. So you might say, 
yeah. this half of the class, your job is to ask questions to the text. Yeah. The, so, and then the other half of the class, your job is to answer your peers' questions yeah. okay. to the text. Okay. Um, or you can say, hey, this half of the class, your job is to annotate pages one through four. Okay. And so then I need to plan in advance what, like, what task they need to do to sort it out, right? I would so, think so, yeah. Yeah, that's the best. Okay. That's, uh, yeah, great answer. And uh, <laughs> another thing, yeah, because I, I thought about it, it's planning time takes more time than actually doing it. That's what I initially. That is did. so true. Yeah. <laughs> that's, why, that, that's why I don't use it yet, but I'm thinking, still thinking and kind of planning stage right now. So that's why I'm asking these questions. And then I'm, as I already mentioned, like I'm going to use it for like uh, posting like lecture slide and then or video, or whatever <laughs> the document like article and then I, I want to receive real feedback from the student or somebody already mentioned like confusing portion of the article or areas of confusion. Slide. Yeah. And then is is good for that, right? And then I think it's a anybody, great yeah. 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 Anybody can like give a comment and and then so on, right? And then we can create rubric like you mentioned, right? In the mm -hmm. in the hypothesis. But yeah. how the rubric, you mentioned something about rubric on Canvas is different from rubric on the hypothesis? Well, what, what is um, the, the rubric that you would create to attach to the reading yeah. um, would be a rubric you would create in Canvas first. Uh, oh, so um, I need and to create rubric on Canvas first. Uh huh. And then? And, and then, then you could attach it to the hypothesis enabled reading using the steps that are on that previous slide. Oh, okay. um, and then when you go to grade, you can just click the correct box in the rubric and it will calculate the grade. Oh, so I need to follow your step on the slide, right? Yeah. So that's a better way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I maybe later try and <laughs> see if I have a question or not. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. Any other questions? Oh, I have actually <laughs> one more question because very silent. So. No, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a, so on the canvas, when you actually download the hypothesis, is it from the external tool or mm -hmm. what you mentioned? Which tool are you at again? No, I mean on canvas. Right, but which school do you teach at? Uh, Diablo Valley College. I think they have it installed at the account level, right, Becky? Yeah, I think so. I'm checking now. Okay. Yeah. If that is the case, um, then you would just, when you go to create your assignment, the submission type is external tool. You're right. And then you would choose hypothesis from that list. Okay. And then it's automatically linked with the assignment, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh what is my original question i forgot <laughs> anyway so after that uh i can i mean if i want to receive feedback and that related to then i can create direction on the assignment right mm -hmm. yep then hypothesis is just uh, the student they just use it to give comment based on my like direction whatever direction it is right Yes, that's, that's how correct. it work. And then I can see their feedback from the speed grader, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And then I can look at it and based on that, I give comment, whatever it is, right? And then give a appropriate score, right? To each person. Yes. And my question is, uh, I can also give comment there directly from the hypothesis or? On speed, well, you can annotate just as well alongside the students. Uh, okay. Um, in fact, I, I encourage it. I think when they see that their professor or their instructor is active in the annotations, they like that. Yeah. Um, but you can also give them comments with, from speed grader. Either way, but it's a different, right? Right. If you give them, if you annotate, then the rest of the students in the course will see it. Uh. 
then they can figure out my my annotation as a pro from the professor, right? They can see yeah. it because mm -hmm. it has your name attached to it. Oh, name attached to it. Okay. Yeah, that's the one thing I'm wondering about how they figure out. <laughs> I did it or somebody else did it. Yeah, so every should... annotation has the student's name on it. Oh, that's why. Okay. Yeah, that's then if everybody does it, then on the same spot, then it's there are so many, right? In one spot. Yeah, but you can organize by the individual students or by topic or by tag, even where you um, give them uh -huh. similar to the hashtag. Yeah. That's more details, right? <laughs> yeah. That, what, that you know what? I thing. think yeah. um, it might be helpful if you want to schedule some time with Becky or I. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, we'd be happy to kind of do a quick demo for you and walk yes. you through all the pieces. Okay. Yeah, that might be better because my question is a little more detailed. But yeah. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> yep. Thank you. I, anyway, I'll try and then have come up with a more detailed question and then. Yeah, definitely. Let us know. Yeah, that's a better idea. Yeah, yeah give it a go. And then um, we'd be happy to sit down with you and answer any yeah. other, well, virtually sit down with you anyway <laughs> and yeah. answer any questions you have. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for uh, presenting and answering questions. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Um, I will just repeat what I said. The, Becky and I are happy to sit down with you or to answer your emails. So do not hesitate to reach out if anyone has more questions. Um, you can share this deck far and wide with your colleagues if you like, or with anyone else. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and sign off unless there are, um, aren't any outstanding questions out there. Otherwise have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you at another partner workshop soon. <laughs>